Now, to more questionable science in a green cause. I have been astonished as year after year scientists cry, oh, the Great Barrier Reef is doomed. It's been destroyed. Panic, send money. Particularly send money. And then, what a miracle, the reef recovers. Now, this has been going on for years. In 1973, for instance, there was this story about the crown of thorns starfish threat. It appeared in the Canberra Times. I'll read it. The Great Barrier Reef, as it had been known for hundreds of years, was finished, President of the Great Barrier Reef Committee, Dr R. N. Dean, said in Brisbane tonight. Except, of course, the reef wasn't. And now global warming alarmists, they do the same thing. The reef is doomed. It's dying. It's half dead already. And they had a backtrack. Take perhaps the leading alarmist when it comes to the reef, my old wrestling partner, Professor Irv Hul Goldberg of Queensland University. In 2000, for instance, Hul Goldberg claimed we now have more evidence that corals cannot fully recover from bleaching episodes such as the major event in 1998. And the overall damage is irreparable. In fact, he admitted in 2009 he was overjoyed, that was his word, overjoyed to see how much the reef had recovered. And yet he's still at it, predicting gloom. Climate change hasn't gone away and it really is a major threat to places like the Great Barrier Reef and Australia in general. We lost 50% of the reef's shallow water corals in the last four years. But the question now is whether these alarmist scientists keep underestimating how fast and how easily the reef does recover, whether it's from bleaching from warmer seas or global warming, if that's what you want to uh, pretend it's all about, or crown of thorns, or anything. Because now it's the turn of the National Marine Science Centre to be surprised. It's studied the damage done to the reef around Gladstone by Cyclone Hamish, and it now says, surprise! We found that the coral ecosystem has completely recovered from this cyclone event after eight years. In fact, it found there was now more coral cover in that area than there was before the cyclone. Joining me is a reef expert who was actually sacked by James Cook University, unfairly, a court has now found, for calling out some, some academics for exaggerating the threats to the reef from global warming, is Professor Peter Ridd. Peter, it's wonderful to see you again. What does this latest study tell you? Well, it tells us what we've known for decades, that uh, the coral recovers very quickly. It's been known, you know, whether it's cyclones, as you said, or uh, cranothorn starfish, about 10 years is what it takes. The whole southern third of the reef uh, between 2011 and 2016 had a 250% increase in the amount of coral in that time, and uh, this is just what happens. Pick, you, pick up something you just said there. Because these researchers from uh, Southern Cross University said their finding gives them hope in the ability of coral to recover from bleaching events. Um, but they also pointed out the coral in these er this area of Gladstone is actually doing better now than it was when it was first studied in the 1970s, and there's actually much more coral cover, which is what you're just suggesting too. So what about all these scares lately that the reef has been catastrophic and dying, except not in Gladstone, apparently? Well, it's, it's doing very well in a lot of places. Sure, there's a lot less coral now in the very northern part, but it will come back within a few years. Um, the surprising thing is that the, is that the scientists are surprised by this. I mean, it's like a bushfire. Um, if a bushfire goes through the forest, we're not surprised when the trees grow back. So why should we be, su be surprised when a cyclone goes through or a crown of thorn starfish plague, which is an, an entirely natural thing as well, uh, that the coral uh, recovers from that? I mean, clearly, the, the reef has had thousands of cyclones over the last uh, millennia, and it knows how to recover from these things. What is the process that a lot of these alarmists are missing here? Well, the basic problem is that corals don't seem to be allowed to, be, to die of anything. Whatever they die of, it's some, somehow unnatural. The, the thing about the reef that is often missed is that it tends to die in very spectacular 
performances are, you know, a plague of, of starfish, a cyclone, where you can literally lose almost all the coral um, within a month or even overnight, and then it grows back very gently. Now, this is something that's been well known, and I just don't understand why scientists are surprised. In the end, just like you were saying about the Murray Darling and the, the ridiculous case of the salty lower lake, this is, has to be sheeted back to our unreliable scientific institutions. Now, this latest report you're talking about, we should commend those scientists for saying how well the, the reef has recovered. I mean, we can quibble about them being surprised. But there's much bigger institutions who are not calling the way the way it is, and um, they need to be called into account for that. Now, Peter, um, just in case people are saying, oh, you're just cherry-picking. One study, one particular part of the reef, that is not evidence that the reef is resilient, although I did give other instances. I could go on. Uh, I think uh, Herb Goldberg yes. has been surprised a couple of times by reef recovery. Is this the only reason... He has. ..the only evidence we have had that the reef is actually more resilient than people have said, that it can recover well? Well, look, we've known that it's recovered from dozens of cyclones in the last 50 or so years that we've been studying it. But there's plenty of other things. You know, the, the coral growth rates, the calcification rates, as it's called, are, if anything, about 10% faster now than they were in the 1940s. There is a huge amount of evidence showing that the reef is, is resilient. And, by the way, the amount of coral on the reef is about the same now as when records first began properly in the, in the mid-1980s. The amount of evidence that suggests that the reef is just fine massively overwhelms the evidence that it's uh, somehow in trouble. Well, see, here I get to the same question as I posed in the editorial, which is, you know, in the editorial I was saying, how is it that the government seized on one report that's an outlier that says Lake Alexandrina must be kept fresh uh, because it was naturally fresh and ignores all the other evidence that says, no, it was always uh, estuarine, you know, salty, seawater, etc., in this case, why are governments reacting to the alarmism of reports that the reef is dying when there's so much evidence that it, is, it recovers brilliantly and that it's, as you say, the extent of the reef, coral reef now is what it was when it was first studied? Um, because the scientists, though, these one or two odd studies like the one you suggest, are actually... Um, they're seized by the uh, scientific institutions and they are the ones who advise the government. So in the case of the reef, it's the Australian Institute of Marine Science, uh, which is untrustworthy. For the Murray-Darling, it's anything but, uh, from the Murray-Darling Authority to the CSIRO are effectively untrustworthy because they're not putting the whole side of the story. So I've actually got a, quite a deal of sympathy for the government because it's very difficult to argue with a, you know, uh, the CSIRO, who should be trustworthy, and most people do trust them, uh, the trouble is that we shouldn't be trusting them. Well, is it because uh, crying alarm, get, you know, is sexy, gets your money, gets your attention, or w what is going on here? Is it the green ideology that's sort of taken over? I, I think that's probably the, it's the latter. Um, these people really do believe um, that there's a problem there. I mean, the, the, the lower lakes, the, you know, trying to claim that that was uh, always fresh is just ridiculous. I mean, I've looked into that in great detail. Um, but some of these other things on the reef, you, you can sort of see that an emotional marine biologist, when they see a lot of coral die, uh, they don't necessarily think as clearly as an obje uh, and objectively as they should. OK. Um... Peter, a federal court back in April um, ruled, and rightly in my opinion, that you've been sacked unfairly for criticising claims by fellow scientists, alarmist claims on global warming and the reef, etc. Um, <laughs> claims like you've just been making, by the way. Has James Cook University now done the right thing and reinstated you? No, and um, all the correspondence so far indicates that they are looking to appeal. They haven't done that yet. They've probably got another couple of months before, um, after the, what we call the remedies hearing has been held. Um, but no, there no remorse. They still think they've done the right thing. It's quite a remarkable situation that we have a university doing this. So you telling viewers the straight truth about the reef, for instance, as you've done tonight, according to James Cook University, the way you've done it, uh, and what you've said makes you unfit to be a professor at the university. That's basically it, isn't it? 
That's right. And when you think about what's going to happen in the next couple of months in Queensland, where there's going to be new reef uh, regulations that are coming in, which will make like what's happening in the Murray-Darling look like a walk in the park in terms of the damage that's going to be done to farms. You know, it, it shouldn't. They should. The the North's university should not be stopping a northern scientist saying. Let's just check this science a little bit more carefully before we bring in, bring in more regulations that are going to damage the cane industry, the cattle industry, the, the, the um, uh, tourist industry and all these other industries. Peter Reed, I wish you uh, all success in your battle with that university and I admire your courage in fighting it. Others would have uh, crawled into a hole and, and shut up. But uh, thank you so much indeed for standing up for science.